It should be illegal to be this good looking. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that gray, good lord. Anyways, what's going on? What's crack, guys? It is hot. Got that sunglass tan going on, you know, just that white trash look that I'm good for. Anyways, I got a bunch of stuff I'd like to go with you guys. Just a bunch of neat stuff. Um, got the car out, still having some couple weird issues that you guys have probably seen if you've seen my Instagram. So for some odd reason, the speedo in this rolls backwards. And if I can, I'm gonna flip it up on the screen here. You'll see me making a pool here. So once I get to 80, it then goes the opposite. And I don't know why. I have it set up exactly the same as this car. It does the same thing. It's one wire outputted using the same wheel speed, um, using the same uh, sensors up front. I even switched it to another one on this car thinking maybe the sensor is bad or some, so on and so forth. It rolls backwards once it gets to 80. Now, someone could say, well, um, you know, maybe the Hertz is wrong, this, that, and the other. Maybe the gauge is messed up. The only thing that, that to me that seems odd or off is the fact that the car had a decoder digital box, worked fine. When I had the Bluetooth module with the T56, worked fine. So I don't know why it spins the opposite way. I logged it and it still doesn't make any sense. So I can see it and technically from what it's showing, it should be going up and it shouldn't be rolling backwards in any way. So why is my car, once it gets to 80 miles an hour, going backwards? I don't know. It's super, super weird. Um, I, I don't get it. I did. I tried rising, falling edge for the sensor. It is set up for Lucter. Everything shows properly. Um, and yeah, that's the speed shows correct. The output for the, the sensor show or output for the uh, item shows correct too. I don't know. It's just super weird that it's not working properly. So we fixed the speedo. So it's something very dumb. Everything matched to her car after I fixed the whole reluctor wheel. What didn't match was the duty cycle. So if I can come over here real quick, here's a log. Here's another thing I want to talk about. Here's another thing. And da, 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 it's under sensors. Come on. Sensor, I don't actually know. Fix all the vehicle speed stuff, right? All that was done. But go down to my generics, and this is where you can create whatever you want. Gotta love that. And da, 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 speedo right here, here. So there is what's called de uh, duty cycle, which is for your frequency settings. If I come over here, hit this, it changes your output for your duty cycle uh, for your Hertz. So if you come over here, it changes this. So, so the duty cycle was so high, when it saw 80, it started to roll back. It just didn't like it. The Hertz were just so far off because I had it set to 89% and the car just didn't like it. Set it to 50, which matched what she had, works perfect now. I uh, checked it with GPS the whole way up and it works great. Uh, Fixed it, honestly. Um, very happy. The other thing I want to talk about, rolling anti-lag and launch control now work. I didn't have the table set up right and I didn't really know because I was basing everything off AEM. So here's my ignition override uh, for my rolling anti-lag. This is actually a little aggressive. I actually tamed this down now. Um, and I did everything in 500 increments instead of 1,000. So you can see I ramp it in with negative 20, but over here where you see 20, 25 PSI, this is actually even less now in this 15 here. Uh, I actually only have 15, negative 15 degrees of timing. Uh, this is five to negative five here and it's zero here at 25. Um, Cause it was just, it was hitting like 23 PSI. I'm like, whoa, hey, would you say, calm down here little guy. Like, no, let's not do that. That's a little too much. So I calmed it down some and I'm going to take it out for another rip. And again, launch control works because rolling anti lag has physical movement with it. So it, it tends to work a little bit better um, or a little bit harsher. So I can go a little bit more tame on the ignition advance where with uh, launch control, it needs it to ramp in hard. So this actual table here works great. And I went to 250 increments and here's where it gets weird. I was used to AEM, which just had a basic table. They literally said, like, what is this uh, PSI you want? What is the RPM limit, which you kind of have here? And then go from there. This kind of, if you do it the whole way up, so if I say 4,000 up, I wanted to do it, it's going to actually start basing it off that 4,000 RPM, which I thought was weird because you have an end RPM. You shouldn't work until you get here. 
but it uses the whole table. So a little bit different. I should have known better. Um, so I changed it to 4,000, 4,250, nothing. It's still giving me normal fuel. 4,500 into 5,000, I start cutting, and it works very, very well. Gets up to like 16, 17 PSI. Shooting past a little bit past the 15 PSI mark, but nothing crazy, and I don't want to have uh, not enough in there that falls on its face. So I'm going to leave it like this for now until I get out to test it and actually launch the car. So I'm going to leave this, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and then fuel correction is this is the table for launch i didn't do fuel correction on rolling anti-lag i just didn't see the ne necessity for it um and this is what i was left with again zeroed it out here zeroed it out here and just added fuel in where i started to need it again around 5,000 rpm and when we're building up here i added more fuel in to keep that baby going so that's pretty much it so rolling anti-lag wheel speeds fixed everything is quote unquote fixed now guys i'm beyond happy so we did find a new issue though and uh, powerhouse racing of course is in here for the win uh the new issue that we have is i'm over spinning my alternator and it's overheating so now i got a comment when i mentioned this on facebook how do you know if it's overheating well autotech puts these stickers on them that are 275 degrees and if they peel off that means they're getting too hot you have a grounding issue or you're over spinning it in my case I'm overspinning this hog, uh, revving to 8,500 RPM or more. Uh, it's just overspinning it. Now, hers never had an issue because I only revved to 7,000 RPM, um, and it just doesn't doesn't care. But I think after all those dyno pulls and revving it to the moon, it was starting to make the old girl not too happy. So. I'm putting a larger pulling on it to make the, alleviate that issue. It has a powerhouse racing pulling on it now, but it's a standard pulley. I need to put the larger one on. Um, now, when you do this, you guys need to understand if you don't have your RPMs high enough, this could cause some issues with not having enough amperage. So need to be sure of that. Uh, thank God this is a 180 amp alternator also. So this is a big, big boy. Um, it has enough juice to, to no matter what. And I don't have a really have a stereo system in this car. Uh, the electric fans don't even work above 40 miles an hour. They're actually designed to kick off over 40. So the only draw is the engine and the fuel pump. So there's really nothing being drawn at that time. So it, it, it'll be plenty fine. So. Uh, I need to pull it off. I just took the belt off here. Uh, I just need to pull it off. I need to get on the top and bottom here and pull this off since there's no plug on it now. So I just go bloop right there. Come on, get it right there. Get that off and the uh, bolt there and at the bottom and that's it. All right, so went ahead and pulled this one off. So here's my Autotech alternator. And I keep seeing people mention the Rad Dan one. I need to like clarify something. I like Rad Dan. I like a lot of stuff about him. I need you guys to understand you're paying a lot of money for the same thing that everyone else is selling. There's no special sauce. Let me take that back. There is time and effort that's put in these alternators. There is that. What I'm saying is the internals are only coming from a few manufacturers in the entire world. So where you see Rad Dance and all these guys come from, they're all coming from the same place, okay? This is also self-exciting just like Rad Dance. Um, you can see here we just have it sealed off just like uh, that one is. I asked, I requested it. These guys personally are like, they're not a fan of it because of how it's regulated. And you can actually see it in Dan's videos too. It doesn't keep it 100% on point. When it's actually regulated, uh, it'll stay at a consistent 14.5, the Hoyter red line. When it it's in, isn't regulated, it kind of goes up. It'll dip down and go down to like 14.2. Again, not a big deal, but Autotech is weird that they want perfection the whole way around. So I get why, uh, but I do prefer not having one, you know, one less wiring, one less plug to deal with. Um, so yeah, that's my personal opinion. Now, that being said, I'm overspinning it. I have a 240 amp Autotech on this. And again, they do sound system setups. It's 240 is way too big. I don't need anything like that. But I have a 240 on there. Hasn't had a single issue in the last two and a half years. It uses a standard size pulley, which is this one here. This is what comes with the kit. And uh, it's just a steel pulley. I went ahead and upgraded to a lighter powerhouse racing pulley. The only difference is it's aluminum. This weighs twice as much as this does. Less rotating mass. Good, great, grand. But this is overspinning. As you can see here, here's my new 2.9 inch, which is this part number here. This will keep it when you're revving above that 7,500, 8,000 RPM <laughs> rev limiter. Um, it's gonna keep it from overspinning and getting too hot. This is how you kill alternators and I don't want that happening. Now, the other thing you need to realize with this is if you don't have your idle high enough, you might not get enough juice to even keep the car like 
everything running and going. So you need to be cognizant of that uh, because you're not pulling as hard on it. Different RPMs, it might not have as much juice. So you need to be cognitive of, are you going to have breakup issues? Is it going to cause you a problem? So I'm going to keep a good eye on this. I'm going to use my uh, Nexus to actually data log it all. And hopefully I don't see any problems. Again, it's a 180 amp alternator. It shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Cause I think, I think even Rad Dan's is 160. Um, and that's more than enough. The Sequoia ones are 140 or enough. Hell, this car had on it an NA five speed, which was like 95 amps. And I never had issues with twin 525 pumps, all that stuff. Now I didn't have uh, electric fans. So this should be way more than enough. Uh, well, I hope so. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, but I wanted to show you the one it comes with the old or the um, the normal 2.2 inch pulley and then this is a 2.9 inch pulley. You'll also need to use this spacer here. You guys can see that. As if you come from the side, you can see how this one sits down a little more. You put this spacer behind it so it stacks up and now they're the same height. So just remember that you do need to use this little spacer when installing. So I went ahead and installed that little washer there. And again, I put some anti-seize on here just because it's a very tight fit in case I need to take it back apart, need to pull this off. Put some anti-seize on there to hopefully help uh, alleviate that just a smidge. Like, I mean, literally put it on here, put it on my finger and rubbed it around. Uh, and it slid on a lot better too because I was trying to put it without it. And yeah, definitely needs that. So then you can just put on your pulley next. And then it comes with this washer. I want to use some dress up bolts, but unfortunately they don't make one this big. So I'm going to put my nut back on there. And then now it's loose. What do I do? Well, take a rubber glove or take your accessory belt, hold it around, hold it tight out here, and then just hit it with an impact. You can use a socket. I use this little three quarter inch impact. Get it down, that gets it nice and tight and put it back on. That's it. That's all you should need to do. Um, pretty basic. So got all the belts back on, took the car back out and this fixed my issue. So that's what it was. It just was being overdriven. So the new underdriven pulley, I decided to get the car up in the lift and wash the car here. Um, just wanted to clean it up. I got to the beach there and counted a half ass clean. So now I got up in the lift. I wanted to see, again, I have a power steering leak, power steering leak from the rack. Um, it's very minimal. It's right here. Again, I painted all this and me wiping it so much with brake cleaner has wiped off the paint. Uh, not a big deal. So eventually I got to replace the rack. It's just, it's really expensive for something you can't see, but I do need it. Um, I know I have talked about going to a manual rack, but they just, after driving this thing at the beach or just driving it around in general, I'm like, I really like having power steering. I like being able to whip the car around and it just works. I don't have any problems. So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, just want to go everything, see if there's anything leaking, no oil leaks, no pan leaks, no transmission leaks. The only thing I really have is I get a little bit of vibration from the ass, um, driving where I really have a problem is when I get above hundred miles an hour, it feels like the car is going to fall apart. Like it did this before. I don't know if it's the eight, eight, the way it's angled. I did do a whole video and has the proper angle on it. Um, so I just don't know what's happening, but when I get over like hundred miles an hour and I'm on full load with it, it's just going crazy. Now I've paint marked everything. Uh, I did pink on that one. This one's red, but I've marked all that. I marked all the axle bolts. These Nordlock washers have held anything. This is not backed out either. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So it's really, it's really bothering me at this point because I don't know what the issue is. Um, I just, I legitimately don't know what the problem is. So I'm hoping I can get it resolved. Now, it's obviously not the wheels because it did this before. So the only thing that has stayed constant here is the diff. So I don't know if there's some balancing issue or what, but I can tell you right now, when I had my Toyota diff, it did not do this. And no, I am not blaming Joel. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just, maybe there's an install error I did. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. And that's my last real resolution because the car drives great. And also want to take the diff out uh, because I want to put 410 gears in it that I have over there. And I think that'll also help it on the street driving. If the gearing is way too long, cool for roll racing uh, because I can do 180 in fourth gear. I think 130 in third gear. 135, so that's, or 137, because if I, when I go to do my draggy for 6130, I only have to shift one time. Um, so yeah, like this is, that's the only thing I can think of guys. Like I've got new other problems. The fuel systems work great. The fuel pumps work great. Fans kick on, you know, clutch chatter. Big believer in this P2M suspension. Yes, it does add a little bit of vibration back so you can feel it through the gas pedal. And I'm saying very minimal, but driving wise, and it might even be that because again, I did solid rack bushings here, but I'm like, honestly, once you're up and moving, like above 20 miles an hour, 25, 30, I just, I mean, it's just so minimal to me. And I like the feedback. I don't know. It just, it feels great. I keep checking everything to see if anything's come loose and it hasn't. 
Um, and again, big shout out to Alex over at Absolute Driven Performance. Those little uh, clamps for the wiring there turned out perfect, so they're not rubbing and I don't have to worry about those sensors going bad over time. Uh, I do got to put my Dula Design splash shield back up. I kept it off for right now just because I keep checking the engine, but that's going back up because it covers all this, protects everything. Um, so yeah, actually I think I'm going to do that here, get it all back up and take it for a spin. Thank you again, guys. I really appreciate all the support. Um, next build is the Corolla. Uh, actually, next is, you know, since I've been messing with this so much, I need to do the interior next. If you guys have suggestions, someone I can reach out to. Um, obviously, I'm looking for any type of sponsor of anyone that's looking to grow their business. I'm out here to help, uh, but I'd like to do some more interior stuff. Then over to this. There's little things we got to work on this car. I'd like to drop out the subframe in this, get it all powder coated. And I'd also like to uh, do some interior mods on this car. Transmission is obviously a big one I'd like to get built. But again, thank you all very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace!